Yes. I love you guys too. All right, I'm going to get right into this. Um, so I, I said to my husband the other day um, that it's become apparent to me over these uh, last few years that the left has no idea that the world did not begin in 1776. Three years of traveling the country and facing off with hysterical liberals, and that is my scientific conclusion, that they haven't the slightest idea that anything exists or that anything ever existed outside of the United States of America. And let me give you a recent example. You will all recall when the left, which in my opinion has morphed into a doomsday cult, feverishly and inaccurately predicting that everything President Trump says or does will end America. Uh, but you all recall when they once again prophesized our doom when Iranian terrorist Soleimani was slain in a military operation. You remember that, right? <laughs> this is the beginning of World War III, their headlines read. They promised us we were going to head straight into World War III. It was a, a remarkable day uh, because it was the day that we watched Democrats and liberals, the ones who have been shrieking about sexism, misogyny, and the need for more feminism, turn into passionate defenders of the state of Iran, the country whose constitution quite literally states that a woman's life is worth half that of a man's, a country where women are punished by law for up to 10 years in prison if they are caught not wearing a veil suddenly became the apple of the left's eye. Of course, the war never happened, but in the midst of their delirium, a tweet went out from resident anti-American Colin Kaepernick. And uh, the tweet read, exactly, and I quote, there is nothing new about American attacks against black and brown people for the expansion of American imperialism. America has always sanctioned and besieged black and brown bodies. American militarism is the weapon wielded by American imperialists to enforce its policing and plundering of the non-white world, end quote. Fascinating. A rant about black and brown bodies being imperialized, a word that I must assume Colin either doesn't know the definition or the history of, used in defense of Iran. And so, of course, you know me on Twitter. I felt it necessary. <laughs> necessary. To mention to Colin, gently of course, you know me, I'm very nice on Twitter. <laughs> to mention to Colin that that particular country of brown and uh, black bodies used to be known as Persia. And rather unfortunately for his implied thesis regarding their perpetual victimhood at the hands of white people, Persia used to be an empire, quite literally an imperial dynasty for 200 years, almost as long as America has been alive. It was once the most powerful state in the world, imperializing regions from Egypt to India, regions of, you guessed it, black and brown people. And while I have to say that I was not shocked to learn that Colin Kaepernick has evidently never picked up a historical textbook, I will say, I will say that I was shocked that he hadn't at the very least seen the movie 300. <laughs> a little movie where the, where the black and brown bodies are, are looking to imperialize the white bodies in Greece. Maybe he thought it was all made up and, and fiction. Or maybe, maybe Colin Kaepernick isn't earning millions to tell the truth. Maybe he's being paid millions to convince black and brown bodies that they are oppressed, to keep them angry and confused and uneducated which could explain why on Thanksgiving Day of last year, Colin tweeted, I quote, the U.S. government has stolen over 1.5 billion acres of land from indigenous people. Thank you to my indigenous family. I am with you now and always, end quote. Holiday tweets are his favorite, by the way. On the 4th of July, he tweeted, what to the American, is, what to the American slave is your 4th of July? Co-opting, by the way, a Frederick Douglass quote, and stripping it of its original context uh, to convey the idea that blacks owe this country not a moment of celebration. I'm talking about Colin because the picture that he is painting is clear, and I'm using him as an example because it is so in line with the overall opinion that we are seeing come from the left today, an opinion that America is a horribly racist country whose guilt cannot be untethered from her period of slavery, which is interesting because if slavery is an everlasting sin from white men, 
Why was Collins so clearly able to forgive that sin from American indigenous people, his quote unquote family? That's an inconvenient truth. You see, the sin of slavery was not brought to this continent by white Europeans as the left would have us imagine. Slavery existed everywhere in the world, including here since the dawn of humanity. Different Native American tribes weren't sitting around kumbayaing over a fireplace. They were trying to imperialize one another. They would enslave their wars, war captives into labor. They would sometimes sell their own children. They tortured others as a part of their religious rights. And depending on which tribe you were in, cannibalism was even the commonplace. Oh, did cannibalism get lost in, in Colin's flowery depiction of indigenous people? Yes, before the Europeans ever landed in the Americas, Native Americans routinely cannibalized one another. Most notorious among them, perhaps, uh, was the Aztecs. When the Spanish colonists arrived in Mexico City, they were greeted by piles of over 100,000 skulls belonging to humans that had been sacrificed to the gods. In fact, in one archaeological dig, they found the remains of 42 children, all around the age of five, who were sacrificed to the rain god. Special days required more sacrifice, by the way. On the inauguration of Aztec's Temple of Major, they sacrificed between 20,000 and 60,000 human beings in a single day. Their ceremonies, I'd like to paint a little bit for you a picture of the ceremonies. The ceremonies were performed in front of large crowds. Usually an adult male victim was held on a stone, his chest was slashed open, and the priest would take his still beating heart and hold it to the sun. The severed head was then placed on a rack, and his remaining body was rolled down the temple where it was skinned and it was dismembered, and the body parts were then distributed to the spectators to take home to eat. For decades, the colonists' writings about the savage culture of Native Americans were dismissed here in the United States. The politically correct argument was that white European men needed to wrongly portray the indigenous people to justify their own genocidal pursuits. Liberals in the United States even went so far as to claim that the Native Americans themselves had lied, or rather, um, more politically correct, had, mid, had been misunderstood um, in their own recorded sacred texts regarding their cannibalistic practices. Until science happened and anthropology in the year 2000, an anthropologist came and, and was hesitant to report his findings in, from Colorado, which he characterized as definitive evidence for sporadic cannibalism in the southwest of America. Even the lying, leaking New York Times had to acknowledge the truth in an article that they then published entitled, New Data Suggests Cannibalism by Ancient Indians. Now, I want to be clear here that my purpose in sharing all of that is not to issue some sweeping condemnation of Native American Indians, nor is it to offer up a vindication for the murderous actions of the early cult colonists. My purpose here is to simply tell the truth the truth about the history of all men of days past. The truth about the history of all men of days past, a history that is complex, ugly, brutish, immoral, and leaves no man, regardless of his skin complexion, guiltless. But the left wants us to believe otherwise. To them, imperialism, cannibalism, murder, slavery, all of these undeniably un sinful acts are forgiven in a historical context so long as they were not committed by white men. So they can forget the murderous Persian Empire. They can forget the cannibalism of indigenous tribes. They can forget the heinous actions of imperialistic Egyptian Empire, the Turkish Empire, the Muslim Abbasid and Rashidun Caliphate empires, the Chinese Qing and Ming empires, the Mongol Empire, the Ottoman Empire, the Japanese Empire. We can forget the fact that the overwhelming majority of the world's empires were not run by white men. They also, by the way, they also, by the way, choose to forget the fact that the first to abolish the practice of slavery was Great Britain. They were then followed by the French colonies, who were then followed by the United States. Centuries of slavery and three countries of white men led the world in ending it. No, no, no. 
Don't clap. You're supposed to forget it. You're supposed to forget it because leftist indoctrination teaches us today that it only really mattered. Slavery only really mattered when they did it. The white man's history uh, needs to never, ever be forgotten. But what if we're not talking about history? What if we're talking about present? What if we're talking about today? People like Colin Kaepernick hate America right now, and that hatred is rooted in some intangible concept of the present sin of our country's mere existence. Surely, that must be the reason why on the 4th of July, Colin also tweeted, how can we truly celebrate independence on a day that intentionally robbed our ancestors of theirs? To find my independence, I went home, end quote. He was referring to Africa. Colin took a trip to Ghana because in his own words, he wanted to see what his people saw before they were forcefully taken away. And I really want to pause and drive this point home, so let me restate it. In lieu of celebrating his independence in America, Colin got on a plane and went to Africa, a continent upon which he found better grounds for celebration, which is interesting. It's interesting because currently, today in Africa, there are close to 700,000 slaves, and this is going to shock the heck out of the too woke to see what's in front of them crowd, but they are not being enslaved by white people. They are being enslaved by other Africans. Child soldiers, human trafficking, forced labor, all exist within the same sub-Saharan region that the transatlantic slave trade took place. African bodies are being sold today like they were being sold then, and they are not being purchased by any country of predominantly white men. It's a wonder that Colin never mentioned that in Ghana today, his beloved country, country of uh, emotional reprieve from the horror of America, 20,000 children live in slavery to support the fishing industry along Lake Volta. In fact, it was leftist network CNN that covered the story last year when a boy was rescued from slavery and had explained to them that while in captivity, he was made to work tirelessly and that if a, the famished children were caught trying to eat the fish, they were beaten so senselessly that they wished that they had never been born. Why didn't Colin mention any of this? Why haven't any of the alleged courageous leaders on black issues of oppression mentioned any of this? I know, because they aren't leaders at all. They're all extortionists. Colin extorted black America to earn millions. Colin extorted Native Americans to maintain his image, and Colin extorted Ghana for a photo op so he could continue to earn those millions. But Colin wasn't the first, he isn't the only, and he certainly won't be the last. So, to Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, to Nisi Coates, to CNN, to the New York Times, to MSNBC and their anchors, to every single one of you race hustlers, who have extorted black pain to line your own pockets, who have blindfolded the black youth against seeing the opportunities that lay beneath their feet here in America, in the land of the free, in the home of the brave, I say this to you. There will be a Blexit, a black exit.